The story we'll explore today takes us back to the bustling Grand Prix circuits of the ultra-lightweight class, better known as GP50 during the late 1960s. The 1966 racing season marked a significant period. At that time, Honda held a firm grip on the GP50 championship. Their four-stroke machines demonstrating clear superiority and often dictating the outcome of races. This dominance naturally served as a strong motivator for their domestic rival, Suzuki. The manufacturer, identified by its S logo and known for its skill in developing high-performance two-stroke engines, felt compelled to challenge this situation. At Suzuki's Hamamatsu headquarters, their top engineers were tasked with a clear objective. They aimed not just to compete with, but to surpass Honda's achievements. From their research and development facilities, two significant projects emerged, which would later become notable in Suzuki's racing history. The evolutionary Suzuki RK67, and its more distinct counterpart, an advanced engineering project named the Suzuki RP68. Let's first consider the Suzuki RK67. This motorcycle was essentially a development of the already capable RK66 model. Suzuki's engineers carefully refined every aspect, further improving the 50cc twin-cylinder two-stroke engine. That was their primary design. The RK67 featured a liquid-cooled 49.75 cubic centimeter two-stroke twin-cylinder engine which produced a remarkable 17.5 horsepower at 17,300 revolutions per minute. The engine had a bore and stroke of 32.5 by 30 millimeters and a compression ratio of 8.8 .8 to one. Induction was managed by two 22 millimeter Mikuni carburetors and a dual rotary valve system. This technical prowess resulted in a specific power output of approximately 350 horsepower per liter, a figure that, when considering the bike's low weight of only 58 kilograms and a top speed of around 109 miles per hour, highlighted the advanced level of Suzuki's engineering. The chassis consisted of an aluminum tube frame with telescopic front forks and a swing arm with twin rear shock absorbers, utilizing drum brakes and 18-inch wheels. To manage its narrow power band of just 500 revolutions per minute, a 14-speed gearbox was employed. The RK67 was designed not only for high straight-line speed, but also for agile handling through corners, making it a comprehensive championship contender. However, while the RK67 represented a methodical evolution, the Suzuki RP68 signified a more radical engineering approach. Here, Suzuki's engineers explored less conventional ideas. They understood that creating a truly superior machine might require unconventional solutions, possibly influenced by indications that Honda was developing a three-cylinder four-stroke engine. Suzuki decided on a notable counter strategy. They would construct a two-stroke engine with a V3 configuration, which was quite unusual for such a small displacement. Consider an engine with a total displacement of only 49.8 cubic centimeters, yet incorporating three cylinders. One cylinder was positioned vertically, while the other two were oriented forward at an angle of approximately 100 degrees. Each cylinder had a very small piston diameter, around 28 millimeters. This V3 configuration was selected to achieve a higher power density and potentially higher engine speeds. Indeed, the Suzuki RP68 was designed to operate at up to 19,000, with some accounts suggesting up to 20,000 RPM, generating a peak output of around 19 horsepower. To effectively utilize the power produced at such high engine speeds, and critically, to keep the engine within its narrow optimal power band, reportedly only about 500 RPM wide, an equally specialized transmission system was needed. The Suzuki RP68 was equipped with a gearbox, featuring up to 14, or by some accounts, 16 speeds. This number of gears, even by modern racing standards, is substantial. The closely spaced gear ratios were vital for the rider to maintain the engine within its peak operational range. 
Furthermore, to enhance durability at high engine speeds and reduce friction, the bearing materials were silver-plated. The lubrication system also featured an automatic oil pump, an advanced feature for that period. With these technical specifications, the Suzuki RP68 was projected to achieve speeds exceeding 185 kilometers per hour, approximately 115 miles per hour. Calculating its power to displacement ratio, this small engine produced roughly 380 horsepower per lighter, a remarkable volumetric efficiency that remains impressive. The 1967 racing season commenced. The Suzuki RK67, with its refined design, quickly demonstrated its capabilities. The bike proved highly competitive, often outperforming its rivals. Suzuki secured numerous victories and podium finishes. In several races, the RK67 was even capable of lapping competitors from European manufacturers like Darby and Kreidler, who were not full factory efforts. Suzuki clearly established itself as a leading force in the 50cc class. However, amidst Suzuki's success, unexpected news emerged from Honda. The prominent manufacturer decided to withdraw from competition in the 50cc and 125cc class at the end of the 1966 season. This decision significantly altered the competitive dynamics. Suzuki, having developed the RP68 as a primary competitor to Honda, found its main rival absent from the field. With Honda's departure, Suzuki became the sole major Japanese manufacturer remaining in this lightweight class. The RK67's strong performance in the 1967 season, combined with the reduced level of direct factory competition following Honda's withdrawal, led Suzuki to reevaluate the RP68 project. The rationale for deploying such a highly specialized machine was questioned in the absence of its intended primary competitor. Additionally, the prospect of regulatory changes began to appear. The International Motorcycling Federation, observing the rapid technological development in the 50cc class, initiated plans for technical limitations. It was anticipated that from the 1969 season, though some sources suggest earlier implementation, 50cc class engines would be restricted to a single cylinder and a maximum of six gears. Such regulations would clearly impact the viability of multi-cylinder, multi-speed designs like the RK67 and, particularly, the RP68. Consequently, considering the altered competitive environment and the forthcoming regulations, Suzuki made a strategic decision. After the successful 1967 season, the Suzuki factory team opted to withdraw from the GP50 championship. Despite this, the influence of the RK67 continued. German writer Hans-Georg Anscheidt acquired an RK67 unit, a Mark II version with some chassis and suspension modifications, following the factory team's withdrawal, and chose to compete in the 1968 season as a privateer. Remarkably, Anscheidt, riding the RK67, managed to win against European factory teams and secure the GP50 World Championship title in 1968. This outcome underscored the advanced engineering of the RK67. One might wonder how would the RP68 have performed if it had fully competed? This remains a point of speculation. What is certain is that both these motorcycles contributed distinctly to the narrative of Grand Prix 50cc racing. Mm -hmm.